Hi, welcome to this tutorial. I'm Marco, and in this video, I'll show you how to create and save bitmaps with Python from Cinema 4D, and also how to create the Mandelbrot set so that you can make your own textures with it right from the program. Let's get right to it. So we start by creating a camera, a plane, and a null object, which gets the Python tag. I always rename my Python nulls to Python to keep it clear. Also, we set the plane to negative set and the size to one. And if you look through the camera, set the projection to front and focus on the plane. That's important for later. In the code, we start by importing the bitmap library. And next, we set the file path for our texture. So for that, navigate in the Explorer to the location where you want your pictures to be saved and copy and paste the path in quotes. However, be careful to replace the backslashes with forward slashes, otherwise it won't work. It took me a while to figure that out. Let's call the first picture first texture.png. Also, res So we set the resolution to 600 and initialize the bitmap with that as a width and height. Then we save it to the file path as a PNG. And now let's look at the folder. So there it is. So far it's just black. So now we can start drawing on the bitmap. First let's make the background white. So the set pixel function takes the U and V coordinate and fills the pixel with the following RGB values. They need to be from 0 to 255. Let's hit execute and there we see it. Next I want to do a little bit of housekeeping. Let's create a new material and load the bitmap in the color channel. Turn off spec and set the preview size to 1K. That should be enough as long as the resolution isn't more than that. We assign it to the plane and also press Shift and C at the same time and type reload all textures and drag and drop the button into the viewer to add it to the head up display. We'll need that later. So next, let's draw a grid on the texture. So, in the middle of the image, at half the resolution, we color the pixel black, otherwise the white. Let's hit execute and navigate to the explorer. And here we see the updated picture, but it's not in the viewport. So we need to click the button we just created to refresh all textures. So for now, our next goal is to plot functions on the bitmap. The problem here is that bitmaps work with U and V coordinates, which means they start at the top left of the image, and while U increases to the right, the same as the X coordinate, V increases towards the bottom, contrary to the Y coordinate. Also, I would like our origin to be in the center of the picture, so that we see both positive and negative values. So we also need to shift our canvas. So in the code, we put the 
So for X, it's pretty easy. We just shift everything half the resolution to the right. For Y, it's a little trickier. To flip the direction, we need to multiply it by minus one. Then we first shift it all the way to the bottom. And from here, we apply the same shift as to X, half the resolution up again. I know I could combine these, but like this, we keep it in the same format as X, also subtracting the base shift at the end. So now we can start plotting functions. So we have the linear function in red and the quadratic function in green. And if we hit execute and reload, we can see the linear function. And I guess if we zoom in, uh, there we go. We also see our quadratic function plotted in green. So finally, I just want to fix the grid as it still relies on the old UV texture coordinates. But in fact, I want the lines to always be at the axis of the coordinate system. So when X equals zero and Y equals zero. All right, that's it for part one. You can continue playing with this by plotting functions and shapes and maybe even do animations. But we'll move on to creating the Mandelbrot shape now. So during the break, I've updated the scene a little to prepare the next steps. Mainly, I added six user data fields to the Python node that can be used to control the script. You can add user data by selecting the object and clicking user data, add user data. And I put the ID of the fields behind the names for visibility. So we have update, which is a Boolean, two integer fields, one float, one vector and a gradient. And in the code, I've created a bunch of variables, each linking to the corresponding user data. So now we can get rid of this line here because we set the resolution now with the user data. Also, I've renamed the texture to Mandelbrot, which I also had to replace in the material here. And last, I also created another null object called focus which are also referenced in the code here. All right. So now immediately we get to the gritty part and here I'll just paste my code as a function at the top of the script. So this is the function that takes care of the Mandelbrot creation. I didn't come up with this myself. I took the basics from the Wikipedia page down here and some further explanation from a really cool YouTube channel you should check out called The Coding Train. So I will just briefly talk about what's going on here. And if you're interested in learning more, I'd very much recommend checking out my sources, especially the video from The Coding Train channel about that. So the Mandelbrot shape. It's actually a visual representation of numbers with two components, which are plotted in a coordinate system on the X and Y axis. The numbers are special because when you do something specific to them over and over and over again, they always stay among the same numbers. And the shape we know as the Mandelbrot shape simply is created by coloring those numbers black and everything else white. So in our code, we feed the coordinates of one point to the function and it does its magic a number of times, which is specified in IMAX. The more times it does the magic, the more accurate the picture will be, but also the longer it will take you to calculate. If it gets to the end of IMAX and the number is still within a certain range, we consider that point to be part of the Mandelbrot shape. Otherwise, we know the point isn't part of the shape and we can stop sooner. So in our main code, we'll get rid of the functions and instead call the Mandel function. 
So the month function returns the number of iterations it went through, which we compare then to the number of iterations permitted. If it is the same, we know the number is part of the shape and we'll color it black. Otherwise, we'll color it white. So in our user data, let's set the resolution to 200 and the iterations to 4. Hit execute and don't forget to reload the textures. And voila, there's our first Mandelbrot shape. So before we get to fixing the obvious elephant in the room, or rather and, I quickly want to put in a switch for our program. The creation of the Mandelbrot shape can be quite heavy to calculate and because the script is run every time we change or even just select something in cinema, it will slow down our scene immensely. Therefore I added the update button in the user data and in the code before all the heavy stuff we check if the button is switched on. So we need to indent our whole code so that it only gets run if we check that button. And if it is checked, the script immediately resets the button so that we can use it again. So now we can work on the scale and navigation of the image. To zoom in, we just have to add two lines dividing X and Y by the zoom level we set in the user data. And now if we change the zoom, we can see the image getting bigger. Also now is a good time to increase the iterations and size of the texture to get a better resolution. Now that we can zoom in and out, next we want to be able to move the image to focus on specific parts. So that's why I created the focus object. The goal is to place the object on a part that I want to become the center of the new image and that I can then zoom in further. So in the code, we have to introduce two offset values for X and Y, which we get from the focus object and which then are stored in the offset user data, adding them to the current value so that its previous value isn't lost. Then we set the focus back to the center. And further down, we also have to apply these transformations to X and Y. Again, you could collapse all of these lines into just one each for X and Y, but for readability, I left it in three rows. So let's see if it works. Great. So I can place the focus on, let's say, the tip. And this will then be my new center, which I can then zoom in further. The cool thing is that these are the real coordinates of that point, meaning that if you want to find a specific point in the set, let's take for example this one here, you can just enter these coordinates directly into the offset to get to that point. So as a last step, we'll add some colors to the texture. This is done by looking again at the number of iterations the Mandel magic performed. 
Before, if it didn't reach the end of IMAX, the pixel was just colored white. But instead now, we can look at how many iterations it actually performed and color it accordingly. So if the calculation stops right away, it should be colored red, for example. And if it almost gets to the end, but not quite, it's colored blue. And in between, we can have all sorts of different colors. But because we work with the gradient now, we need to import the render module to access a couple of functions from there. And let's add a new function so that our main doesn't get too clogged. We'll call it color pixel. And it needs three attributes, the level, the gradient, and the maximum number of iterations. So let's look at the Cinema 4D Python documentation on how to work with gradients. I guess we'll need the calc gradient pixel function. Yes, calculate a gradient pixel. Note, this has to be done within a pair of init render, free render calls. Here's an example. Cool. Then I can just copy and paste that and my work is already halfway done. I can get rid of the gradient line here because we already initialize it at the head of the function. But I also then have to rename every gradient variable to Mandel gradient. And we don't want to print the color, we'll save it in a new variable. And as the position on the gradient, we input the ratio of the number of tries to the maximum number of iterations. There is a small issue, however. The setPixel function, as I mentioned, requires colors as an 8-bit integer value, so from 0 to 255. The calc gradient pixel function, however, returns a vector with the components as float values reaching from 0 to 1. So before we return anything from the function, we have to do a small calculation to get two values from 0 to 255 and the same for green and blue. So now at the end we can return the values for red, green and blue from the function back to the main code. And there all we have to do after calling the function is to plug the return values into the set pixel function. And that's it. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and got something out of it. I realized at some point that Maya, for example, comes with its own texture generator for Mandelbrot shapes straight out of the box and thought Cinema could use something like that too. For my final script, I just added some more lines to be able to do animations and create some nice endless zooms, for example. However, be aware that the further in you get, the more iterations you need and the longer the picture will take to calculate. And Cinema 4D will freeze in the meantime. Thanks for watching.